Welcome. Today we're going to begin restoration of one of our favorite kinds of projects, a statue that has been in a family and part of the family's history for years, or in this case, for decades. The culprit with St. Therese has been the outdoors. Plaster statues will never survive long term in the outdoors unless they are encased or protected or sheltered from the elements. In this case, rain has been very rough on the statue. Starts off by taking off the paint, which peels, and then it actually starts to roll the, the actual plaster of the statue. In fact, here on the elbow the damage is so severe that if it had been left much longer this whole area would have collapsed making it much more difficult to restore the statue what we'll do is on the top of the head here there's a patch that I have replastered re and that's what we're going to do to most of the statue after we cover it all we'll then have to resand and then we'll reinforce some of the statue from the inside down on this bottom corner and the whole corner piece has actually come, uh, become broken off. We will reinforce that. We'll put in some sculpting wire to hold it. And then from the inside of the statue, we'll show you as we reinforce with new plaster and in some parts, epoxy to strengthen the structure. The project begins simply, cleaning and reassembling an old plaster statue that once belonged to the owner's grandmother, Mrs. Mary Hubbard getting the grime and buildup out of the crevices and corners using a sturdy brush, flat wooden sticks, and even a good old-fashioned firm toothbrush. And once that's completed, we use compressed air to get under the chipping or peeling paint that's been left behind. To secure the broken base of the statue, we use two-part epoxy to fill in some breaks, and then the gaps and holes are covered first with a plaster-laden cloth. It's applied in several layers. It hardens, then allows us to apply and sculpt a thicker new layer for the actual repairs. Then it's back to plenty more careful sanding of the entire statue. When she arrived, St. Therese was very rough, much like this surface, which was caused by exposure to rain and the elements outdoors. Plaster statues usually don't survive very long. In this case, the entire statue was very, very rough. We've done some replastering and we're doing a lot of sanding to smooth it off. And in places like this in the arm where the water had actually eaten its way all the way through, we added on some plaster cloth. When we get into the studio, we'll be putting on some new layers of plaster, not only the strengthen it but also to seal out the holes and then once areas like this are smoothed out completely we will get to the stages of putting on the primer and begin the artistic work of painting exposed to rain plaster gets soft and rain slowly carves into the surface and the solution is often mixing and adding new plaster but it's in small batches because it hardens very quickly when applied atop old dry plaster here a hole is filled in with an epoxy base and the missing right shoe is roughed in in pencil. When that's done, repairs to the missing bottom of the saint's habit, more smoothing of the new shoe and base, then over to the bottom of the gown again. Now under bright lights, the gently sanded plaster is primed in gray. That brings out any major rough spots to be touched up with more plaster. The repaired base is also looking good and we're ready to sand with fine grit paper to prep the surface for base coats and the artistic painting in multiple layers and shades. Basic brown is first, including the full robe, the black veil of her Carmelite nun's order, and then the base of skin tone begins a significant change in the statue's appearance. The damaged and rough plaster was repaired, sanded, smoothed with fingers, and is now transforming from white plaster to St. Therese. While Pauline shifts to the detailed painting, the half crucifix is prepared and painted in a solid deep silver. It's reverent but meant to remain subtle when it replaces the missing crucifix on the finished statue. Highlights and shadows have been added to the saint's habit with offset shades from the original color. I've moved on to start the bouquet of roses that the little flower was known for. Finishing the small remaining spots of flesh tone, and now, I focus on the facial features, especially her eyes. I pay close attention to making the eyes look lifelike, to make a real connection with the viewer. 
A brighter, lively color palette adds to the joy of vibrant flowers, and the greenery completes the bouquet. With its new crucifix, the statue is completed and ready for the unveiling to Mary Hubbard's granddaughter. When you're ready. All right. She would be pleased. And that means we're pleased. St. Therese has returned to Canada's East Coast in the family's prayer room, prompting reflection, prayer, and faith. Thanks for watching.